everybody. Welcome to Earn Dales. My name is Dale and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all the different things that I do and make and and am interested in. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. This is a catch-up video on Hendrix the hair. I promised you one um, <clears throat> this week and as you will see very soon I've completely changed my mind about what I'm doing with the hair but that's coming up. What I want to say is that I was having a lot of difficulty sourcing the wire for the ears and the body and it's really stalled me because I've sewn the body together. I've been working on the ears as you'll see. Everything I've got the stuffing ready but I couldn't find the wire. But today I went to the post office and I thought well, I'm just going to go to our tiny little hardware store here and see what there is. I was going to get electrical wire. If I could find it, nothing else, I was going to get electrical wire. Even if it was the really thick stuff, I was going to split it down the middle and use that. And um, the proprietor there, she says, oh no, we've got something just so perfect for you. And I got wire. It's 14 gauge wire and it was only $6.98 for 50 feet. That's going to do a lot of something and it's great it's stiff but I can still bend it so I'm in business now watch these hairs just whip out of the um, studio well let's just go with one for now so I have changed course when it comes to making my hair and you will see that coming up and I will come back right after you watch these few little episodes um, or these few little videos that I recorded I did little segments and um, I'll come back as soon as you've watched this. I have totally switched gears on my Hendrix the hair. I decided to shelve the flowery one that I had started. Um, I really only had cut it out. I didn't. And I did the ears. But I decided to hold off on that one. Because I'm not sure that I have enough of the... Um, fabric that I want to do my patches with. I, I need some more variety with what I have. So I'm going to do mine with denim. And I took a pair of, of uh, blue jeans apart to make my ears. And this is the pocket. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to waste these pockets. There's two like this. So I'm taking, I'm trying to take some of this excess material off here, but wh why would I waste this? This is really nice. As well as there's some really nice bling on the front of the pocket. I'm going to cut that all off. And at the back, there's all of this. I'm going to use all of this on my rabbit, all of it. So what I'm doing right now is just taking this back piece off. And then I think I'm going to actually even cut away some of this other back here because it's, it's, too, it's too thick. I don't need all of this. But yeah. Um, there's no way I'm going to waste that. I don't know if I'm going to put it on his. I would like to put it on the ear somehow. I think it would look really pretty. But I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. And the reason that I decided to do a blue jean hair is because of my art piece. One of the art pieces that I, I did recently. Actually, I didn't do it recently. I did it last year. I'll show you it right here. I, it's, um, it's a piece of art done completely with blue jeans. Even the eyelashes are blue jeans. The main is the thread from the blue jeans, as are the eyelashes. And um, it's hanging for sale in an art gallery at the moment. And I named it um, Levi. Here it is up here.
We have a, a little recycle place downtown in our little town here. And that's where I get most of my blue jeans from to do my work. And I'm always amazed at the blue jeans there. This is a tiny little country town and you wouldn't expect to find this kind of a thing there. But there's such a variety of jeans, it's amazing. There's the standard, you know, work, heavy work, jeans. I pick the ones that are the most worn out because they make the best. You know, there's so many different colors of jean, but then when it starts to wear out, it gets even more colorful. So I try and pick uh, the jeans for the colors of the denim, you know, the faded parts and the non-faded parts. Like these jeans were fairly dark, but parts of them were quite faded. So there's my contrast. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. But these kind of things, it amazes me that I don't even, I've never even seen these kind of jeans for sale anywhere. So obviously they came some from someplace else, not from around here. But I'm delighted to find such pretty, um, Pretty embellishments on here. It's going to take me a while to tear this all apart though I think. It's not going to be, but there's a lot of excess. It's been folded over quite a quite a bit here and so I uh, I want to have it as flat and as light as possible because otherwise it's just going to add a bunch of bulk that I don't want to have to sew through by hand. But this is really lovely. These are Series 31 Amethyst jeans. That's what they were before my scissors got a hold of them. There we go. I got that part off. Isn't that lovely? So I have to decide what I'm going to do with it now. I'm not quite sure. I might just cut it and put it on. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to follow this like this. Actually, I'm going to, how did I see this go like this? I'm going to follow this one around here. So I can put a piece here and I can put a piece there. And I got more here to play with. That will look really pretty on there.
and I have the other one to take apart still, wherever it went. Okay. I don't know what I did with it. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Oh, here it is. I still have this one to take apart. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just working on one of the ears. I decided to add some other patches as well as the ones that I got off of that pocket. And now I'm just doing a running stitch around and then I'm going to wrap that running stitch uh, when I get it done. This needle I'm using seems to have a catch in it. I'm not sure why. Well, I tend to have a, a habit of using these bigger, thicker needles to unplug my glue bottles, the tops of them. I, and I think this is what it is. It's had come in contact with too many glue bottles. I tried some sandpaper to get it off, but it's not budging. So my idea of doing the denim was a good one. But like here, where I did this part right here, I was going through three th thicknesses of denim and that was really hard on the hands. But that's how it goes. So as soon as I finish getting this down to where the other one is, I'm going to wrap this and I'll show you what I mean by wrapping. You have to do a, just a, a running stitch like this. And then you turn around and you just wrap it. I won't have, I might put some new thread on here. And just keep on going till I run out of thread, I think. Show you in a minute. I'm not going to do every ear the same. I'm going to do something different. I've, a I've added the patches already. I've stuck them down, but I, I haven't done any embellishing. I'm not going to do every one exactly the same. Boy, this is really a stubborn needle. Okay, one more stitch. Oops, don't want to do that. I don't know what this thread is. It's some kind of fancy crochet cotton of some kind. It's quite thick, but it has a nice sheen to it. That's why I chose it. And I'm using white and cream because of this. I thought I would just stay within that same guideline. I'm just going to thread this needle and then I will wrap these stitches. So I need a knot at the end. And put your needle through. This makes a really nice stitch and then you just go underneath each running stitch go the same way all the time and it just wraps but it leaves a little jig jog on it so it has a it's a pretty effect don't wrap 
don't pull your thread really tight. Leave it nice and loose so that it has the wavy look to it. I should have put these a little closer together, but it doesn't really matter. I like that my edges are fraying. I was hoping that would happen. And I'm going to leave it. See what a nice edge it makes? I'll show you when I get to the smaller stitches. It makes a, a better edge. It's a really small one. See, it makes a really nice wiggly line, but you don't have to do much to get that effect. So I flipped this over because I want to wrap it the same way. I want to have the wrap going the same way. It does make a difference, actually. If you change, you'll see it. I'm not pulling these tight at all. This one's going to sort of go around under here. probably be sewing over this wrap stitch when I when I put my wire in my ears but that's okay I lost my needle continue with the wrapped stitch And then just put your needle back down through and do a knot on the back. And that's it for a wrapped running stitch. I think there is a proper name for it, but that's what I call it. So I think I'll leave this just like this. I like it. That's one ear stitch down. Now I got to go to the next one. This will be a front ear because it has a little bit of fade and this will be the other front ear because it's got a lot of fade. I don't want them exactly the same. So I'll show you this one when I get it done. I just wanted to mention something. If you do a lot of hand stitching and you don't like the needles that you can find in the stores today, Go to some secondhand places and see if you can find some of these old needle book cases, hopefully still with needles in them. This one I've had since I was a child. So this is from the 60s, obviously, and it's Canadian, obviously. But the needles quality, the quality of the needles from 
the 50s, 60s, 40s are so much better than what you can buy today. These ones are made of Swedish steel. They're made in Germany. And these are such good needles. This is actually where I got the needle that I'm using right now. I have no idea what gauge this needle is, but I don't care really what the number says, but it is such a strong, sharp needle. I mean, I've been poking myself and drawing blood <laughs> all morning long. But you can't find needles like this unless you pay a lot of money for them now. And um, it was in this needle book of mine. I've actually had this needle book a long time. See, I've got some nice long ones in here. And um, this one here is another needle book. Oops. Something falling out. These ones are nickel plated. And this one, these ones tell you what kind they are. Hand sewing needles, sewing needles, darning needles. But I really think that these ones are, are much better needles. These are such strong needles. I love them. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking for really good needles, you don't always have to, you know, order them from online or things like that. There's good needles to be had in secondhand shops. Check it out. All right, the second ear, I'm just doing a chain stitch around the outside. Um, this one I did a little bit different. I have three patches. And then I found the patch with the name of the leather patch. Although I don't, I'm really not sure if this is leather or not, but I put that on there and I put a little bit of bling on here and the rest is just going to be a chain stitch around. So that one's just about finished, but my finger is actually bruised. So I'm going to have to quit for a while. This is really hard, especially when you're getting up here and you're going through three layers of blue jeans. Um, I have my fingers really, really sore. So I'm going to take a break, but these are going to be the two fronts. And the backs are going to be these two with, I'm not going to do, I'll do a round and I'll do the stitching here. And maybe I'll put something right here in case I flop the ear this way. I might put a little bling here, but I'm not going to do as much on the back as I have on the front. So I'm going to give my finger a break and um, I'll get back to you. So as you can see, I've changed my mind again, which is so, so me. This is just how I am when I do crafts. I have, I have one thing in my mind and then, you know, I'm not realistic about what's in my mind. And then it just goes boom and I figure out what I want to do. And that's exactly what happened. So my first hair, and I'm quite sure I'm going to make more than one, um, is going to be all out of old blue jeans. And I told you about my source downtown here. I was actually going to pop in there today, but they're closed. So I'll go sometime this week and see if I can find some different colors. But really, I have a lot of scraps. I don't have a lot of big pieces now because I have been using them on a lot of projects. But I do have a lot of scraps. And really, that's all I need for this project, isn't it? So I hope to be able to really buckle down now and get my hair going to the point where, you know, it's going to actually look like something. The only thing I haven't been able to source are the eyes. I know I can get them on Amazon, but you know, like I said before, I just don't want to go to Amazon anymore. I don't know why. I just, I'm trying to stay away from things like that. So I will look around um, and see if I can find some. If not, I will order them from Michael's, which is just in Brandon, so I can, or in Winnipeg, which is not local, but local enough for me. And my whole um, reason for changing was, was because of the material that I had. I didn't really feel, after I got looking at it again, I really didn't feel I had enough variety to do what's in my head. So um, I do have a lot of old blue jeans of all colors and so I'm going to be fine with that and my inspiration really was 
my picture that my horse Levi that I did and um, I know that the picture that I put up here because it's not landscape it's portrait you only saw a bit of it so I'm going to put a picture of Levi as my picture on my video so you can have a good look at him he's really beautiful and it's all done with scraps of old jeans so thanks for watching and next time we do something with Hendrix I'm hoping that I'm going to show you a rabbit <laughs> and not just ears and scraps so thank you for watching everybody Thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting on my videos. I do so enjoy your comments. And new subscribers, thank you for joining me. And anybody who's just popped in here because they've followed the Hendrix line all over the internet. Um, if you see anything on my videos, watch a couple of my other videos. You might find other things that uh, you do or like. So take care and I will see you again on Hendrix, the hair part I guess it'll be part two because this is going to be a starting over part one. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. See you soon.